So when we're looking at someone and we're trying to assess, is there a neurotransmitter component? We're always kind of looking at the dietary component because if we don't get nutrient dense foods with lots of good B vitamins and lots of full spectrum essential amino acids, especially from animal products, we're going to have problems. If we're not able to break those foods down with adequate enzymes or HCL, we're going to have problems. If we have a lot of adrenal stress or hormone imbalances, that can play a big role and hormones play a big role in helping to allow those neurotransmitters to work better and to hang out longer between the synapses. Okay. Especially females because progesterone and estrogen dominance can play a big role in that too. And the other component is chronic infections can affect the absorption of a lot of these things and, and create bottlenecks. But we'll also run organic acid tests alongside to see how these metabolites look. So we may run things like vanomandolate or homovanolate, which give us a window into homovanolate dopamine and give us a window into vanomandolate adrenaline. So if we have higher amounts of adrenaline, that means we're pulling a lot of that dopamine to make it. Or if we have low amounts of adrenaline, that tells me that those pathways have probably been whipped like a tired horse for a long time. And now, now that amount's low, probably because there's some level of depletion upstream with dopamine. And same with dopamine. If we see low dopamine, that tells us there's depletion. If there's a chronic high dopamine metabolism, we've been whipping that tired horse. And we kind of treat, I treat dopamine high and adrenaline high is like the same thing. You're, you're just overstimulating that pathway and we got to calm it down. Yeah. And I've seen it a lot in, let's talk about some of the people, like when and where are we seeing this? I mean, technically it could be anyone, right? But I would say after having babies, so women will, we'll see, you know, depleted neurotransmitters after babies. I mean, you're up all night, you know, you're, yep. you're, you're stressed, you're, you're breastfeeding middle of the night. So I would say new moms, we see this quite a lot. I think some of the whole postpartum depression, there's a yep. lot of mechanisms. Mm -hmm, Have we done a mm -hmm. show on that, by the way, maybe we should add that to the list. Have we done yeah, a postpartum? We no, we should do that. That's a okay. great, great call. So, so we'll have to hit that. But I think part of that goes into the neurotransmitters. I know there's a big hormonal change mm -hmm. too, but I think New moms would be a big one. I would say business owners, CEOs, entrepreneurs, uh, maybe pilots that are changing a lot of time zones. Anybody working more than I'd say 40 to 50 hours a week. I mean, you see 60, 70 hour work week people, they're going to be depleted. I would say uh, night shift workers, ER workers, doctors, nurses, you know, frontline healthcare workers. Those people generally were seeing a lot of brain chemistry stuff. They're just burning the candle at stress. What else? Am I missing anybody? Can you think of any other like big patient population group that would be affected by this? I mean, I would just say if you have an eating disorder as well, anorexia, chronic low calorie eating, all those things can be, you know, a real thing. People talk about a lot of the benefits of fasting, but if you aren't getting enough nutrition, that, that benefit of fasting becomes anorexia pretty fast, right? Anorexia is basically just starvation, chronic low calorie, which low calorie equals low nutrition as well. And so if you're chronically fasting and you're, that's leading to a chronic low calorie diet, that's a problem too. So we have that component we got to keep an eye on. So if we're going to be doing fasting, we well, you got to make sure it's a punctuated fast, or if you're doing more intermittent fasting, you still have to make sure you're getting enough nutrition during that compressed six to eight hour feeding window. Yep. That's good advice. Yeah. The eating disorder one is huge and people might not even know they might not be, you don't have to be diagnosed. I mean, even this whole idea of orthorexia, right? Where people are trying so hard to be healthy. We did a, a podcast on that. I think people will get into that by accident. They're going too low carb. They're going too low calorie. Maybe they're having food reactions. So they're limiting their diet. And then boom, by accident, like you said, the neurotransmitters get affected. Then you're, yeah. then you're not motivated to get back on track, right? So then once you're off track, then what happens? Well, maybe you go into too much sugar or too many cookies. I mean, you can you know, there are effects. We're not just talking the brain chemistry in a vacuum here. We're talking, how does this affect your life? Well, you know, getting things done, cleaning, organizing, taking care of your kids, getting your business done, doing your taxes. I mean, just all the stuff you need to get done becomes so much harder. If, it, if it's requiring an extreme amount of effort to get things done, consider cortisol, but also consider dopamine. Yeah, you really want to like look at the whole picture.